Hi everybody, welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be installing and setting up Bazaar in a Docker container on Unraid. Bazaar is a subtitle handler for those of us that want to supplement our media libraries with our own subtitles. Well, first we're going to start by installing the container on Unraid and then I'll be showing you the basics of integrating Bazaar with Sonar and Radar as well as setting up some public subtitle indexers. So if you're not using Unraid and you just want to see how to set up Bazaar, there will be some differences, but the fundamentals of the program will still be the same, so feel free to skip ahead if that's what you're here for. Alright, so let's get started. First, uh, we're going to start out on the Bazaar homepage, just to give you an idea real quick of exactly what it is and what it does. It has an automatic search feature as well as a manual search feature. You can go in and set criteria for certain subtitles. Of course, there's different platforms that it runs on, and today we're going to be focusing on the Docker containers. So let's go ahead and switch over to our Unraid dashboard and then we're gonna to switch to our community applications. Do a quick search here. There it is. We've got two different options, Bazaar by Linux server and Bazaar by Hoshio. I've already got a Linux server sonar container running, so I'm gonna go ahead and run with that one. Although I do like Hoshio's containers. Uh, his, was the, his radar container was the first one, I believe an Unraid in the community applications to run the nightly build. So I've got actually one of each of their containers running and I'll show you how to implement Bazaar with both of those. So let's go ahead and pull down this Linux server container. I'm gonna map the movies here to my media movies folder. Then I'm gonna map it to my TV folder under media TV. And be sure and double check your port here. Make sure you don't have any conflicts. I don't have a whole lot running on this test server, so I should be good there. Let that pull down real quick. All right. So now we can go ahead and open up the bizarre container. and it starts us off on our settings page. Uh, the first few lines for most of us general installations, we can leave these the same. Uh, I'm not running this behind a reverse proxy today, so I can leave the URL, URL base the same. I don't need any security since this isn't exposed. There's our API key. Uh, proxy, for those of us that do run proxy servers on our, webs on our uh, servers, uh, or if you have a SOX5 proxy, you can enter that information here. I'm going to go ahead and enter my local HTTPS proxy real quick, which I have running on my main Unraid server, so I'll just enter that here. And the rest of it, we can leave the same. Now, actually down here at the bottom, uh, I know the devs a lot of times make things better by gathering uh, anonymous information but for me just peace of mind I like to go ahead and untick that box hit save and it should ask us for a restart I believe oh nope we're in good shape okay so now let's go ahead and move to the sonar tab now we do have sonar installed on our server here so let's go ahead and enable that Now I've found that I have better luck when I change this. Even though it's on the same IP address, I like to go ahead and manually enter that IP address. Uh, my IP address of this server is 192.168.1.22. My sonar ports are just the standard 8989. Um, I'm not gonna be using SSL, but I am gonna go ahead and grab the API key real quick, and then we'll make sure that we get a, te a successful test off of that. So. Here on our sonar tab, we're going to click on settings, then we're going to go to general, and under security there, we can see we don't need to, to worry about the authentication, but let's just grab our API key, copy that, 
and we're gonna paste that in on our bazaar right here. Test successful, perfect. And then we're gonna do basically the same thing here in just a second for our radar. Uh, the minimum score, you should be able to keep that the same. If you're a little more picky about your subtitles, you can feel free to increase that. If you're not near as picky, feel free to drop that down. Download only monitored, I'm going to leave that unchecked because I want everything that I've got in my library to be downloaded. Uh, I don't have any excluded tag, I don't want to exclude any series types there. The path mappings, let's take a look at that real quick. Now I do already have this one set up already, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it real quick and add it back in, that way you can see what it's like. Yes, we'll delete that. Okay, so I've got no path mappings right now. So let's go ahead and add that. Oh, we need to save our changes real quick. Let's do that. Changes saved, okay. Let's add that. So this is going to be the path for sonar. Now if you remember in our Docker container we have sonar switch back over sonar is mapped to slash media okay inside the container so that's what we're going to be looking for right here if we drop that arrow down that should confirm it there it is that's our media and then the path for bazaar that we have mapped to our tv folder let's just double check that real quick we have that mapped to slash tv very simple scroll down and what do you know, there's Big Brother. So click save. And there it is. We can see that path mapping available now on our uh, sonar settings page. So let's go ahead and save that. Now let's switch over to radar. Okay, here on our radar screen, it's pretty much gonna be the same thing. Uh, I've already filled in my host name IP address. The port number is just the default port number for radar, URL base, going to leave that undone. The API key, let's grab that from our radar settings real quick. We'll copy that and we'll paste that in here. Make sure that works. Test successful. Minimum score, I'm just going to leave that at the default. Again, if you're a little more picky about your subtitles, you can increase that score minimum, or if you're less picky, say you're not getting any results for certain movies, feel free to drop that down a little bit. Um, download only monitored, I'm gonna skip that. And then we need to add our path mapping real quick, just like we did for sonar. Oh, need to save our changes first. Got me again, all right. In our radar docker container, let's double check our path mapping inside the container. We've got our movies mapped to slash movies. Okay. And there it is. If you remember on sonar, we had it mapped to media. But this time we've got it just mapped to movies. And there's copy, a digital copy of 21 Jump Street that I own. And for Bizarre, this also mapped to movies. Let's go ahead and add that and save it. And then we can move on to our next page of subtitles. Okay, so subtitle options. To start, we're going to leave this as the default alongside media file. Uh, part of the reason that I like to do this is for Plex, it makes it really easy if you want to enable the subtitle option to have it right there alongside the file. Um, there's another thing that we're going to go over in another video later on for a Docker container called Unmanic, where when we convert those video files, I actually like to remove embedded subtitles and have them manually stored within the, the media folder of that file next to it. So um, I like to leave this as the default, it's my preference. I also want to set Leave this set the way it is, upgrade previously downloaded subtitles, um, number of days to go back in history. Yeah, you can set this if you've got a lot of um, 
new TV shows, you may want to increase this, say, up to 10. But uh, upgrade manually downloaded subtitles. If you force download a subtitle, this may be a handy option as well. So I'm going to leave that ticked. Any captcha if you have a provider for this, that may be great. It would allow you some extra providers over here later on. But I don't have any of those, so I'm gonna leave that as none. Adaptive searching. If you've got a, a provider that limits your calls, uh, your daily calls or a certain amount of calls within a set time frame, this may be handy. Honestly, I just like to brute force it. I like to hit them as much as I can and just grab as many as possible and let the provider limit what I'm able to download and not. Um, search enable providers simultaneously. This is all pretty self-explanatory. Don't choose this on low-powered devices. You know, if, you're, if you've got Plex and Radar and Sonar and, um, you know, your NZBs and you've got uh, transcoders and all that kind of stuff running, this may be something that you want to limit, but for me it's not an issue, so I'm just going to leave it checked. Use embedded subtitles and media files when determining missing ones. Uh, I go ahead and leave this checked because, as I said before, um, I remove all those subtitles anyway if there happens to be some files that don't get converted and they do have embedded media files, that'll just save a little bit of work here for Radar, or excuse me, for, for Bazaar. Um, I don't want to ignore embedded PGS files, I'm going to leave that default. I don't want to in ignore VOB sub files, I'm going to leave that default. Only desired languages, yes, I'm going to leave that uh, the default there as well. Post-processing, uh, if you've got hearing impaired, um, if you want it to go through and fix uppercase, common fixes, white space issues, I do want to go ahead and add that. Uh, but as for the rest of it, I'm going to pretty much leave it the way it is. Um, so let's go ahead and hit save and move over to our languages tab. Okay, here on the languages, we need to make a couple changes. First, we're gonna leave this box unchecked right here. Go down to enabled languages and you want to set this to at least one if not multiple languages that you may require. In my case I'm just going to do English. Now it's worth noting that this doesn't add any required languages to the series or movies it just filters out the language list everywhere in the UI to have a more readable drop-down menu. Right here we want to go ahead and check this box. Set that to English. If you prefer hearing impaired subtitles, go ahead and enable that. For subtitles, that's for subtitles where um, you may not need them for the, the entire show, but there are spots where they speak a different language in the show, and you may want subtitles in those occasions, like on Game of Thrones, where they're speaking Dothraki, and you don't know what they're saying, and so you just need subtitles for just a minute. That's a forced subtitle. So some people like to do both on these. They can be really hard to find. So for my instance, I'm just going to leave it set to false. And I'm going to do the same thing for my movies. I'm going to go ahead and change this to English. And then I'm going to hit save. And move on. Okay, here in the providers, we want to scroll down. Opensubtitles.org is going to be the key provider here. So uh, if you're not a member there, go to the website, sign up, then come back here and enter your username and password. You can just do a free account. Make sure you select skip wrong FPS and keep scrolling down and we're going to look for sub center. I like that one. We're going to do super subtitles. We're going to do TV subtitles, wisdom and Yiffy subtitles. And those seem to have the best luck as far as free subtitle providers go. 
So once you get that done, hit save. And then let's go take a look at our notifications. If you've got notifications already set up in radar or sonar, this should be pretty straightforward to, for you. Personally, I don't set up notifications for subtitle downloading, but it's got basically all the same notification vectors. Um, there's your MB, your growl, it's got next cloud, rocket chat, uh, push over, push bullet, all the big ones there that for those of you that do like to have your notifications on all your subtitle downloads or availability, you do have that option. And then last but not least, scheduler. Here we do want to make a few modifications. So the update episode series, update series list from Sonar, we want to change that to once an hour. Update episodes list from Sonar, we want to change that to 15 minutes. And the update movies list from Radar, we're going to change that to an hour. Now these are mostly just preferences, but I found that these tend to work the best for me. I'm going to leave the disk indexing the way it is, come down here to the bottom, and I'm going to change the movie subtitles, missing movie subtitles, to six hours and leave the rest. So let's go ahead and save those changes and move on. Now there is one last thing I want to show you. You may remember earlier when we were setting our language preferences that it said the series default settings apply only to the series added to Bazaar after enabling this option. Well, we already had Big Brother added to Bazaar before I enabled that option. So the first thing you're going to notice here probably is that I don't have a way to search for subtitles. And the reason for that is because I don't have a subtitle language set right here. So what I'm going to do is edit that. I need to set my subtitle language. There's English already populated. Get that selected. Hit save. And there it is. So now you can see it's showing zero of four subtitles. So let me click on the show. I'm going to go there. And you can do a manual search, just like Sonar Radar. You can also do a manual upload if you already have the Sonar, or the, excuse me, the subtitle file on your computer. Or you can do it an automatic search. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And now you can see that it's already starting to download some of those subtitles. So let's go to the history of our series. And we can see those subtitles being downloaded 25, 24, 23 seconds ago. And there's sub open subtitles coming in like a champ for us there. Then we can do the same thing for our movie. I've got 21 Jump Street there already. It doesn't have a subtitle language set. So I'm gonna change that to English, hit save. You can see where now it says missing English subtitle. So let's go there. And I'm just going to do a search for that. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to them. Bazaar is a pretty helpful application, um, especially if you are hearing impaired or have someone in the house who's hearing impaired, or if you just have a sleeping baby in the next room and you need to turn the TV down. Bazaar is super handy, and I hope this was helpful to some of you guys. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a great day.